just wanna feel the rain with you. It's been over one year since I converted this IKEA cabinet into a full-blown terrarium. And I'm going to tell you all the pros and cons and answer all the questions that you might have. Everything I've learned along the way and whether or not I would do it again. Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome to The Mess. My name is Jake, also known as Plant Gay for Life. I have about 40 to 50 plants in here at any given time. I'm always putting things in, taking things out. I'm rehabbing things in here. Things are coming back to life that otherwise wouldn't. In my very dry apartment, I don't have to care for 50 individual plants. I can water this and fertilize this and care for this as one vessel. One big, beautiful work of art in my studio apartment. So starting off with the biggest pro and the biggest con. The biggest pro, I will just reiterate it again. Again, guys, I got, I think at least 40 plants, probably closer to 50, not including all of the moss, all the different propagations and little cuttings and things that I've thrown in here along the way. And I have plants in here that, while well, I do want to grow them, but maybe when they're not flowering or maybe when they're smaller, they're not the most aesthetic. They don't really deserve a spot on the shelf just yet. No offense, guys, but you know, you're know you not looking so cute just yet. But as one big, beautiful work of art, it just looks like you're stepping into a jungle. It's Narnia, people. Biggest con, I would say that it's survival of the fittest in here. Essentially, when things are all potted up or in the same environment and you're not carefully watering each one on their own schedule, you're not keeping track of which ones are being fertilized, it's just all getting fertilized the same, it's all getting watered the same, it's all getting the same humidity, it's all getting the same light. But that's the thing, guys, it's only got one light source. So if a big aeroid leaf pops up here, suddenly all these plants down here are not getting a lot of light. They're not getting as much light as they used to and now they're only relying on the light that is in the door frame right. Oh, you can't see it. I don't know. You, you, you see that light on, on my hand? Yeah, th there's a light right there. I have a lot of stuff in here. So if you want to make a terrarium yourselves, I know there are a lot of people that do this and they have small things in here. You know what I'm saying? And they watch them grow out over time. I just went big right at the beginning. I'm like, I just want a big showy thing. I want to stuff as much stuff in there. I want to look like the overgrown rainforest because I went to Panama recently and oh my goodness, you're trying to step over plants. Just step over aeroids. They're just growing just all over the place. So that's what I wanted this to look like. I wanted it to look like a big, messy, lush, untamed jungle. But contained within this, like this little box, little window, it's a window. It's a window, guys, it's a window into a little piece of paradise. Oh, another con, guys, is that things outgrow this way too fast. Honestly, had I known years ago when I first bought this thing that I was eventually gonna turn it into a full-blown terrarium, I would have gotten a bigger one. And I would have just made this entire wall, just one giant terrarium because I don't want to get another Mills bowl. I don't want two terrariums, but if I could do it over, I would just invest money in a bigger cabinet because I literally, I want to just hop in here. I want to just shrink down and hop in here and chill. So that's a big issue. Things tend to outgrow this very, very quickly. The biggest change within the last year. So a year and, and some change, a year and a few months because I made this in, I believe, March of 2023, and it is currently late April. That would be the mister. So if I open this up, I have a mister up here that turns on several times a day, and it took a while. Oh, look, I'm, I'm lit a lot better if I had this open. <laughs> So essentially, guys, I would have to spray this down every single day to keep the humidity high, to keep the moisture high, because things would otherwise dry out after about two to three days. So I couldn't really go away uh, for vacation or for a weekend without things getting like critically dry and, and leaves starting to get yellow and dry up and crisp up. And you know, you don't want things in here to look like they're struggling. If anything, you want things in here to be thriving because it's so humid and bright and lush and beautiful, you know what I'm saying? So here is the Mr. System, and let me just activate it so I can show you guys what it does. You'll never guess what it does, guys. It mists! 
So, what? <laughs> All right, let me show you guys. So it's a reptile, smart reptile mister, and I have it on a smart app. So if I just press play, do you see that, guys? Do you see? Can you hear it? Do you see how it's spraying there and there? Okay, so at 7 a.m. it goes for a minute and 30 seconds. At 12 p.m. it goes for 30 seconds. And at 3 p.m. it goes for 15 seconds. I used to do it like two minutes or one minute, uh, three or four times a day. I found that was a little bit too much. Things were getting a little bit too soggy in there. Some things were getting a little bit rot. And uh, I, I did lose a couple of plants. So, um, yeah, I have reworked it a little bit. And I'm still learning uh, how this environment and how all these plants essentially want to be treated. Underneath the cabinet is a big vase, about a gallon I would say, that I fill up with water and that'll last me about half the week. Eh, like four or five days if I fill it up all the way to the tippity top. But I went away to Panama for 10 days and all I did was have somebody come once and refill this thing and it was great. They didn't have to water it, they didn't have to do anything, they just have to refill the water tank that's hiding at the bottom. So I do like that it's, it's a lot more hands off. Because that's the whole point of this thing, guys. I don't want this to be more work for me. I made this and I invested in this and I put a lot of time and effort into making this so that while it's fun to put things in, take things out when they get big and pot them up and then have them out here or whatever, um, rehab things like chunks and propagations or whatever, I don't want to be worrying about watering it. I want to water itself. I just want to refill the thing when it needs to be refilled and that's it. I can put fertilizer water in there and it fertilizes things. So you know what I'm saying? I want to be as hands off as possible. I have all the points here. Uh, biggest regret, I already said that. Biggest regret is that I would have invested in a larger cabinet had I known that I was going to convert it like a year or two down the line after buying it. Oh, most successful plants. That would be overall philodendrons and therium chunks. Again, guys, I can't stress enough how amazing this has been for rehabbing stuff. I have brought so many things in here back to life. Not everything. I've had some plants in here that I really love that have rotted away. Again, it's survival of the fittest, but I would say more than half the time chunks do come back. I can just mount them to the wall. I can forget about them. I don't have to stick them in my grow tents and water them all individually. Also with the fans in here, up here and at the bottom, the airflow is something that I can't recreate when I have a little prop box because the prop box has no airflow unless I poke some holes or, or crack the top a little bit and I always get fuzz, I always get mold and mildew and fungus and disease and all that stuff whenever I try to do it. So I can't do it very well. So I find that things rehab and come back to life very easily in here. Like for example, I have a dresslery chunk, which is right here. I put it in here literally maybe a week or two ago. I think right when I came back and it's already putting out a growth point. And yeah, so it's gonna grow out in there. It's gonna be great. We'll get into a tour a little bit later, guys. Don't you worry. I'll show you everything that's cooking in here. Also the Selegionella, which is the, I think it's called peacock moss. It's not really a moss, Selegionella. It's the blue stuff, which I'll show you a little bit later. It's beautiful. It grows like a dang weed, which is great if you wanna fill things out. It has to be in the right spot though, because if it gets too high up and too close to the light, it will dry out. Uh, if it gets too low down here, it just looks kind of eh, and then it will like rot away. But when it's right in the middle here, like where that stuff is, it's this beautiful iridescent blue and it's just chef's kiss. It's gorgeous. Biggest fail, I have killed a dresslery in here. My first dresslery, which thank God I didn't pay for, I traded for it, but yeah, my first dresslery uh, died in here. <laughs> it was just, it was too wet. It was you know, a, a dress is a dress, and anyone that owns a dress knows that they can be a little bit temperamental. Sometimes they're fine, and sometimes they're just not. It's very, very strange. Oh, I had a voodoo child, which is dresslery and, oh God, is it like luxurians and dresslery? I don't know. It's, it's, or maybe like it's pap and dress? I don't know. But I had a chunk in here that died, died. And that was given to me as a gift. Those are so damn expensive given to me as a gift and I killed him. And the person was like, oh, Jake, don't worry about it. But I was like, oh, but come on, a gift. That plant easily was a couple thousand bucks. <laughs> Thank God I didn't spend money on it, but still it's a gift anyway. Oh, and also the moss. Moss up here tends to dry out. I have to replace it probably 
twice a year or every few months or so. And then little patches of moss like down here and down here where it's darker, they tend to flourish a little bit more. But, but moss, it's really hit or miss. Like here's some moss here that's totally yellow. And then the moss right next to it up here, which is the same moss, is totally green. So it really just depends on, I don't know. Whoever God wants to flip off that day. How often do you water? So I kind of already talked about this, but I'll just reiterate. I don't really water at all, guys. I just refill the bottom vase, which is about a gallon. That's good for at least half the week, probably more like five days, like, like a full work week. Otherwise, beforehand, without the mister, I had to spray this at least once a day, um, sometimes twice a day. I actually have a sensor in here that measures the humidity and the temperature. So in the summertime, when it gets warm in here, like 80 degrees, it can can get almost a hundred degrees in there like 95 plus sometimes it hits 100 degrees and it's like whoa like air it out a little bit because that's a little bit too high and the humidity used to be like you know 80 to 90 percent but now with the mister going off several times a day it's always 100 percent humidity in there and just to show you guys the app here is the sensor but do you see like the Looks like an earthquake chart or something. But that's just kind of showing how it fluctuates. I have it set to, if it goes below like 80% humidity to notify me on my phone. And if it goes above like 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it notifies me. Smart home. <laughs> And the last topic, guys, is pest treatment. Just because it's super humid in here doesn't mean that it keeps spider mites away. Spider mites can still flourish and thrive in here if I am not on top of it. So that myth that spider mites hate humidity, it's a lie. They, they will sniff out your plants no problem in high humidity. So don't think just because you got some higher humidity that your spider mites will stay away. They will find your plant. If a plant is stressed out, so you underwater a plant, it dries out too much, it gets stressed out, they're attracted to plants that are stressed out. So they look for weaknesses, guys. So when your plants are healthy, it keeps the pests away. But yeah, thrips can still thrive in here, mites can thrive in here. I will say though, because I get a lot of my moss from Central Park. <laughs> because I don't want to pay for moss. Screw that. There's moss right over there. Six blocks down, guys. Inevitably, I pick up little critters. Sometimes there's little centipedes in here, burrow themselves in the moss. So sometimes they wake up when I plant it and I see them scurrying around. Uh, moths will just randomly like hatch and, and just start flying in here. What else? There was a, there was a jumping spider in here last year. Uh, oh, and a lot of, I think they're soil mites. They're like these long insects. You would, they kind of look like thrips, but they're not. They hang out in the soil. They eat fungus. So they are great at kind of maintaining this. Also, I get a lot of little snails in here. Do I see any snails? There's usually a bunch of snails hanging out in this corner right here. But yeah, the snails also, I believe, go after the fungus and, and the rotting stuff. I think they eat that too. There's like a little mini ecosystem in here, which I think is kind of neat. As long as they don't get into my bed. That's the only hard line I am drawing in the sand. They cannot sleep with me, but they can be in here. That's fine. I think that's it, guys. If I missed anything or if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I will happily answer them. But for now, let's go on a tour. Let's get in here, baby. Come on, guys. We're going to shrink ourselves down. Let's go. <laughs> Woo, and here we are. We have shrunken ourselves down. Honey, I shrunk the gaze. Here we are. So we're gonna start at the top. Last time I did a tour, I started at the bottom. So let's start at the top. We have three Vanda orchids here. Now Vanda orchids are uh, famously grown bare root, especially down in South Florida. Those mother, I'm gonna try not to swear too much in this video, but damn it. They grow them beautifully. You gotta hose them down once a day and I can't do that. But these are putting out crazy aerial roots. They are looking mighty healthy. I just really hope that they eventually flower. They, they are hot growers, so I'm hoping the warmer temperatures trigger them this summer and they will bloom because it'll be nice to have some blooms in here. This one puts out a pendant in a flower that uh, smells like lemon. Really, really nice. This one has never flowered for me, so we'll just have to see. And this one is a Picara Delight. It puts out like an electric blue. A lot of moss here. Oh, let me just show you real quick. There is the Dresslery Chunk. I got some air plants here. 
that are doing quite well, I have to say. I have a few ficus villosa cuttings in here. This one's doing pretty well. It gets a little bit dried out, but I mean, it's still growing, guys. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. This was a chunk that came, to ba <laughs> that came back to life. I don't know what it is, guys. I really don't know what it is. So yeah, it's just growing there. So I'm just gonna let it grow there. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what it turns into. I have no idea what it is. I really don't. Here is a kunai lense right there. Nice, beautiful, dark leaf. And there is a new leaf coming in. Look how everything is just overgrown. I just love that aesthetic. Here is a prop of Mr. Triangle. Actually, guys, full disclosure, I don't know if I ever mentioned this in a video, but my Mr. Triangle boy, the mother plant got root rot and a little bit of stem rot, so I actually had to rehab him, so I don't have my big mother plant anymore. This is all I have left. It's rehabbing, it's rooting, it's doing quite well, so I'm not worried. I have another propagation in my grow tent of it, and then I have this little guy, which is another Mr. Triangle prop. So, he's fine, he's just in bits and pieces at this point. Here's another ficus villosa. Look at the hairs on that. Isn't that just so gnarly? That's so creepy, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, let me go back up real quick. This is the pup from my fuchsia colored orchid that I got at the New York Botanical Garden. Was it last year or two years ago? I want to say it was two years ago. So yeah, I plucked that off and I have it in here so it'd be nice if it could flower in here because those fuchsia flowers are beautiful. Um, this, oh, what is that? It puts out r cute little red flowers. It's a mini orchid. It puts out red flowers. I forget the name. I don't know. <laughs> what a disaster of a tour this is becoming. Oh, I love this one. This is Squammy Call bl Blushing or Swami Call Blood or Swami Call Red. Look at that. Oh, yes. There's the regular one. Then there's the super dark one like this with the super, super red and those hairs, those Oh, those freaking hairs. Never shave your legs, girls. Uh, this is Anthurium variegatum. It puts out a really cool flower and the leaves get very long. So this is a top cutting that I put in here just today. And then I have the rest of the plant growing out in my grow tent for insurance because this is one that no one grows. I just got it from Equigenera. It was like 20 bucks or maybe it was like 18 bucks. It was like super cheap and nobody grows it. And it's a really cool species. So. Let's go, and I hope it flowers for me soon. This is, oh, what is it? A cotton candy fern. I love this thing. I used to have a big one. It just was too big, and it was taking up too much space, but I have a little one in here, and I love it, and it's great. It just loves moisture, so it does really, really well in here. Oh, this is Philodendron Lynn Hanonie, doing really well in here. These are one of the cloud forest philodendrons that have those super, super corrugated pebbly leaf textures. It's just rooting to the wall right there. I have a lot of wacky cuttings kind of here and there and everywhere. Here is a Luxurians hybrid, uh, Heteraceum. Uh, here's a little Monstera. This, I believe, is Mr. Worldwide, which is the, the NSC Portolet and the Indonesian Portolet crossed together. But obviously, it's, it's too small to really notice. I mean, you kind of see there's like a little bit of a flat sinus there, but it's, it's still a bebe. So we'll see. Uh, oh, I got this beautiful orchid that I got from Plant Corner. Look at that. It's like red. Is it coming off on camera? Here is the Selegionella, guys. Look at how big and beefy it's getting. Isn't that just beautiful? A beautiful blue iridescence. I love that. Uh, in here, uh, Skindapsis, I don't know. I don't collect Skindapsis, but I saw it at Plant Corner and it was a less common variety, it was like a silver something or another, and I was like, ooh, that's really nice, let me get some of that. So I got a little bit growing there, I got some growing down there, and I got some growing here. Isn't that nice? Just adds a little pop of metallic color, I like that. Brazil philodendron right down there. I just recently added this that I also got from Plant Corner, a Monstera adansonii variegate, variegate, whatever. Variegated adansonii variegate, you know what? I don't care. Here, right there, that is a Milano Chrysum that refuses to die. <laughs> I have knocked 
off its new leaf so many times, but it keeps coming back, so it deserves life. I mean, make like this Melanocrysum and never give up, guys. If, if, if you take anything away from this video, make like that Melanocrysum and never give up, because that's been in there since the very beginning. I know this one, Philodendron Majestic, which is Sodoroy and Varicosum crossed together. Got the nice little blush back, that's the Varicosum, and then the silver on top, that is the Sodoroy coming in. Oh, and let's come down here. There is the Dresslery. I love how this one has a red sinus, and there's an emergent leaf right there. And it is rooting as of right now, so hopefully it perseveres. It's still very, uh, relatively new in here. It doesn't want to focus. I just hate this camera. I need to figure out how to work this camera and get rid of the autofocus because it just doesn't work. Look, look. There we go. Okay, and then this is a rehab that may or may not make it. It's the, uh, oh, what was it called? Not the Barrio, uh, uh, Diabloense. It's a really cool underrated Anthurium, but it's very expensive. It came to me as a rehab, and yeah, I, I got it from Cartel Down, and yeah. So I'm hoping that it, it does okay in there. It's been in there for a while. Really hasn't rooted or anything, but... We'll, we'll just have to see. It might bite the dust. I'm not. I'm gonna try not to get too attached to it because, I mean, I do like it. I like how weird it is, but and I love the name Diablo Ense. Here is an oblique that Jenna gave me, aka First Floor Foliage, and it's just chilling here. They're such slow growers, but he's just chilling there in the dark, like that. Let me get the light in here so it's a little bit brighter. There we go. It doesn't really want to focus, but there, there we go. Yeah, you see that. Um, that's really nice. What else do we got? We have this, I think it's Portale and Carla? Yeah, I think it's a Carla Port. Look how spidery those veins are. That is quite fabulous. And it's putting out a leaf, so I think it's doing okay. It did have a little bit of root rot, so I replanted it, repotted it, and then put it somewhere else. Uh, it was in here, that little yellow planter that I have yet to put something else in. So we'll just have to figure out what else can go in there, because I don't like that sticking out. It looks like there's trash in the rainforest, and we don't want that. Oh, we have some Splendid, which is Philodendron. Ugh, what are you? Melanochrysum and Varicosum, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, we got this beautiful one. This is Quechua Queen. Beautiful, slick, iridescent, a little bit blue in some lighting, and yeah, I just love it. It's getting big. It's getting big! <laughs> some orchids popping right down there. Oh, here's a, I think a Anthurium regulosum pup that I just kind of put on the wall. And it's like kind of growing, but staying small, so we'll just have to see. Here's a queen that I mounted, because I rehabbed it from a chunk. It put out a root right there, and so I just stuck it onto the wall here, and it seems to be doing well. So maybe I'll have a little mini queen there. It'd be nice if I can kind of dwarf it or bonsai it, that'd be nice. Oh, here's one of those lightning looking Orchids, I love that. Ooh, look at these leaves. <laughs> I love how this just is slowly crawling up here. Anthurium forgetii, with that beautiful round leaf, love that. And he's been in there since the very beginning, and he is honestly, he is attached to the, to that bark now, which is awesome. Oh, this guy, I love this. This is Versicolor, Anthurium Versicolor. Beautiful plant, and I'm surprised that nobody really grows this because it's not super rare. You can get it from Equigenera for pretty cheap, and it is one of the parents of the Circus Peanut, which everyone wants. It's super expensive. It's Dresslery, which is that guy up there. Dresslery crossed with Versicolor, or vice versa, I don't know. And uh, very, very expensive. You can only get it through clones, uh, through cuttings, propagations, things like that. But look at, look at how it's like kind of blue. I just love this guy. They're not easy to grow outside of high humidity. This is one that only holds on to one to two leaves at a time, so right now it's looking the best it has ever looked. <laughs> but that's the thing, guys. I love having plants in here that maybe don't they don't look that great on their own, in their own pot, but in here it's like, oh, look at that beautiful leaf. I miss all the other beautiful leaves. Down here we have this like shiny boy. What is he? He's like a weird uh, hybrid or something. Oh, he's putting out a new leaf, but he just had some cool like kind of bluish green leaves that were like really shiny and I grew them from a little seedling that, that um, I was given and yeah, he's just, he's kicking it. So there's another 
Brazil hiding in there. Um, here's another hybrid. I forget. It's like Bessier, Affinis, and something else. It has like a red emergent leaf, which is why I like it. There's like some algae or lichens growing on that leaf, which I think is so cool. It makes it look like it's actually in the rainforest because that happens all the time. Things grow on other things. So yeah, that was a little speed run of the updated terrarium. And I'll just give you guys one last look of it from a distance. Oh yeah. That is nice. So guys, if you like this mess, then please interact with this hot mess. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, a gnat just flew out. <laughs> oh, by the way, one last little thing for uh, pest control. Yes, gnats can grow in here because there's fungus, or breed in here, I should say. So I do put in mosquito bits every once in a while, and that usually takes care of them. So, yeah. All right, guys, this has been Jake, also known as Plant Gate for Life, also known as The Hot Mess. All right, I'll see you next time. Ooh, cool YouTuber outro, and bye. Ah!